Hey everybody, my name is Russ, that is Lauren, and we are doing, uh, we have a different series that we do every Thursday, um, stuff like five songs to start with, stuff like uh, five hidden gems, but one of my favorite series is one of our newer series, which is what's so great about, um, and uh, just to, b before we even get into the video, if you're new to the channel, uh, what this series consists of is one or both of us just going, here's why we love this artist, you know, and, and, it, and we don't view these as like um, definitive videos. Like for example, today, Lauren has a lot of points she's gonna discuss about Debbie Gibson and what makes Debbie Gibson so great. Um, but this is, we don't ever set out to be like, this is the full tale of Deborah Gibson. Yeah, like, you know, no. like these are just the reasons you love her mm -hmm. uh, and what you think makes her so great. And I, before I hand this off to you, I think Debbie Gibson is an artist who uh, should be appreciated way more than she is. I hard agree. Like, I'm sure you're going to get, I haven't even looked at a lot of your points, but when I was a kid, uh, uh, people always talk about what's the first CD you ever bought with your own money or whatever. Uh, this wasn't the, this wasn't the first CD I ever bought, but it was the fourth CD I bought um, uh, out of the blue. Mm -hmm. um, and I say fourth. The reason why I know this is because uh, the day I bought my first CD player, I saved up enough money to buy my CD player and the first three CDs. I won't go into that. That's for a different video. But I bought three CDs the same day. Yeah. The next time we were in Kmart was the first time that I bought one CD. I like made a choice to be like, I'm going to buy this album. Uh -huh. And it was Out of the Blue by Debbie Gibson. Um, and since that day, I've always thought she deserved way more mm -hmm. credit then especially she's gotten in the past 15 years or yep. so where people are just like, Oh, I remember her. So having said that, that's a little bit of my thoughts on uh, Debbie Gibson. So I was excited when Lauren was like, I'm going to do a video about how great she is. I was like, preach. Yes. So, so yeah, it's funny. It's not so much funny. I'd, I'd like that you mentioned how you, that mm -hmm. was like the fourth CD you got mm -hmm. because Debbie Gibson for me was, I was like, like a little kid. Okay. But Debbie Gibson was the first artist that, I liked independent of For, any yeah. force mm -hmm. outside myself. Yep. Okay. And I loved her. Which is a big deal for a it's lot a of people. It's a big deal. Yeah. Okay. I was such a Debbie Gibson fan as a kid that like my mom started calling me Deborah. Right. And to this day, if my mom were to walk into this room and say Deborah, I'd be go what? You know, right. like that's how much well, I love I Debbie be Gibson. Like, how, why did you? Why did you come call a thousand miles without telling us? To, right. But, yeah. yeah. But you know, and. <clears throat> I think that there was just something about her that I knew that she was special. And also, I was not really aware. I'm not going to go too far into this, but like I was not super aware that like people were either Debbie or Tiffany mm -hmm. fans. Yeah, I, well, I wasn't either. Like I owned, um, I'm going to sell it. I think Tiffany's first album is just self titled. The one with I think Over Alone Now and could have been, and, and uh, uh, I saw him standing there. Uh, I owned that too. Like I, you know this. I've mm -hmm. been into Prince and Michael my whole life. I've been into Elvis and Neil my whole life. Like I don't, you know, I don't believe in going. You have to listen you have to, to pick one. one. I'm the guy that listens to David Gilmore's Pink Floyd and Roger Waters' Pink Floyd. You mm -hmm. know, um, <clears throat> so I own both. And but years later, I found out that it was like a. Um, um, NSYNC Backstreet Boys thing. It's such a weird false dichotomy, too, because they're yeah. so incredibly different, you know? And I agree. Without saying anything bad about Tiffany, there is a wild difference between yeah. the two of them and as artists. Uh, some of the next things I'm going to talk about paint that, that difference, right? Like, Debbie Gibson, even to this day, does it all with mm -hmm. her music. And she was the, and she still holds the record to this day, as the youngest female to write, perform, and produce a number one hit song, and she did it twice, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, I think, I mean, like Debbie Gibson herself probably has a lot of thoughts on this that are way more valid than mine <clears throat> for a number of reasons, including the fact that she lived through this. Um, but I don't think that we have to look too far into wonder why she didn't get the credit. She didn't get the credit that she deserved right. at that time. At that uh, time, you have to remember that this is an era when. We've for all for how much I love the eighties, um, we were very siloed at the time where you could have one female be the focus and then we had to move on to another female. And my examples for that is like when Tina was huge, um, as soon as Whitney got hu huge, the entire music industry was like, Oh, well, Tina's done. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, every time somebody another female, we yeah. had to do like one at a time one at for a time. the women. Mm -hmm. Um and 
I think it's crazy that no one ever celebrated that about Debbie Gibson at the time. I know. It's wild. I And one point that I think is cool, and this kind of brings into focus um, how great she is at her craft, is that in 1989, ASCAP recognized her and Bruce Springsteen as songwriters of the year. Mm -hmm. Like, we, people have talked ad nauseum about Bruce's songwriting. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, like, the, the organization for songwriters was like, those two. Right. Bruce and Debbie Gibson. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. And another thing that I thought was really cool kind of digging into, well, how did Debbie Gibson get started was, like, she was not a record label um, creation. Mm -hmm. Which I think can also work against an artist. And yeah. Prob and probably did, but go on. Like, not, uh, I didn't mean that like it's a good thing. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, so if this wasn't, to borrow a phrase from you, this, is, this wasn't a, a record label saying, oh, we got to get us one of them Tiffany's. This right. was... Debbie Gibson's mom recognizing that her kid had a talent for songwriting, making a demo tape and sending it out to everyone, to everyone everywhere mm -hmm. uh, until she got noticed and it worked. And yep. it's like I, the, just, just being noticed for her talent at, at 16. I know, which like, is insane. Madness. Yeah. Absolute madness. I think about that a lot when I think about the fact that I was 12 when I bought Out of the Blue. And she like because okay the other artist that I was buying at that time like uh, MJ would have been in his late twenties Elvis was passed away but it was in his all his material was in his forties that I, that I liked you know mm -hmm. uh, late thirties forties um, any of the bands that I liked at the time the ladies from Heart or uh, even you know the the um, Cinderella Bon Jovi whatever, those guys were all in their late twenties at the time uh, and I didn't even realize at the time that this lady's CD that I bought, she was only four years older than me. Like, I'm like. And you're a kid being yeah, like, I'm, I'm like, saving sa my pennies. Saving money to run to Kmart to buy Out of the Blue. And she's like working her butt off to make Out of the Blue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I think that's great. And it's like. So making a which side note, I know you're going to go into some of her songs, but like. That title song is so much better than it gets credit. Like nobody remembers that song, and that's dumb. It's stuck in it's my head. Song, it's dude. stuck in my it's head a, right now. Song. That's the song that's stuck in my head. It's a great song. Um, but yeah, and I so I just wanted to like rattle off some songs of hers. Yeah. That, like she's probably got more than you. If you're watching this, you're I, like, we oh, just I went to see a different artist the other night that I kept saying to people, um, every song they start, you're gonna go, oh, oh I totally know mm -hmm. this one, right? Because you think of them as a two, um, a two song band. And she is absolutely one of those artists that I think people would be like, right, like, oh, I hope she does shake your love, like, because that's all they know, uh -huh. right? But then when you go, every song she starts, which you're about to name, people will go. Like, for example, if these songs that Lauren names, if you do, if you go, I don't remember that one. If you go to Spotify and you press play, you'll go, oh, I t yes, I do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So uh, Only In My Dreams, Shake Your Love, Out of the Blue, Foolish Beat, uh, Lost In Your Eyes, which don't even get me started. Yeah, that song is song. beautiful. Is that on Electric Youth? Yeah. Okay. I always think, is is um, Foolish Beat is on the first one then or no? No. There, I always, for some reason, I always think Lost In Your Eyes is on Out of the Blue and it's not. It's not. Yeah. That's on Electric Youth. But anyways, it's such a, what, uh -huh. a great, what a great ballad. And then Electric Youth, the title track of Electric Youth. Mm -hmm. And... So that's kind of those first two albums of hers mm -hmm. were like, oh, Debbie Gibson. And then she turned 20 and the world was kind of like, oh, we can't handle you being an adult. Yeah, yeah. Which is crazy. I feel strongly that people like uh, Debbie Gibson crawled so Billie Eilish can walk. Sure. Um, like I, and if you think I'm wrong on that, you're wrong. Uh, I feel like because Billie... Uh, and artists of her age, like the industry is still doing that creepy, like, uh, we're objectifying her, but not really, though. You know, mm -hmm. and then when they get of a certain age, they're just like, oh, are we are we done? Here? Yeah. You know, yeah. and I feel strongly that what people like Debbie Gibson went through um, allows people like Taylor and Billy to mm -hmm. uh, live past their expiration date. Yeah, that makes to, sense. To say how ultimately sexist that is mm -hmm. that's how i feel it is because she kept evolving her mm -hmm. her music and stuff and so i the last one i wanted to like make sure i call out here's a song called anything is possible which is from 1990 mm -hmm. which it you're on youtube go watch the video for anything is possible because i will tell you what and i'm not doing the thing because i'm allowed to, debbie looking good yeah. okay she's 20 years old yeah. she's got a cute little short haircut like she cut it short and mm -hmm. it's the song is fire but like nobody remembers that one yeah because debbie th that because one at the time they had decided to move on you again we that can one only peaked one at, at time, 27. Right? Well, we can only have one at a time at that time, mm -hmm. right? And at the time, Paula Abdul would have been uh, still uh, like uh, leading up to um, 
Spellbound, I think, is the second Paul Abdul with Rush Rush. Mm -hmm. uh, would have been right around that time. So they were probably, you know, the industry was probably like, well, we're we're looking over here now. Yeah. Plus, Debbie had passed the mm -hmm. age where they could all feel good about yeah what uh, the wrong things that they were objectifying. <sighs> um, but one thing that's awesome these days is uh, with social media um, and YouTube, you know, they'll just give anybody a channel. Um, but artists like this can do things where people are like. You know, like, for example, if you and I were sitting around a bar and only my dreams played and somebody said, uh, what's 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 she been up to? You can literally just grab your phone and be like this. This. Right. Yeah. And I know you're, you you want to talk about that. Um, I think that's awesome from an artist standpoint where like uh, and this is way off base. But Tom Kiefer from Cinderella will put out like Instagram and, and TikTok things where he just literally picks up a guitar. He doesn't play like, don't know what you got till it's gone or whatever, but he'll just like shred or play whatever he's feeling. And a lot of people will be like, um, you know, like, oh, I haven't heard from him in forever. And it's like, well, all you got to do is look for it. Yeah, and it's just got to look. Yeah. And that's exactly what Debbie's yeah. doing. Like her YouTube channel is a whole lot of fun. Um, but like, what is she doing now? She's really made a name for herself in musical theater, which I think makes a whole lot of sense with her, you know, her background doing all of that. Um, she's still putting music out. She's on, you know, independent labels and things like that. And she herself has kind of said it's, it's, she always kind of had that independent artist spirit on a major label. And now she's yeah. like, I just kind of get to, I just get to be Debbie now. Mm -hmm. And she's touring. That's gotta be so liberating. Oh my God. And she's touring. And what she Not does that she'll see this video, but like, if she happens to like, if you leave a comment, let us know. That's got to be awesome. Like that's got to be. That's got to be awesome as an artist to be like, guess who doesn't care yeah. about my age or what you think or what old men in a boardroom think Have, about mm -hmm. how to present yourself. That's yep. got to be. A it's got to be awesome. Yeah. And I, she's still like playing all of the the hits mm -hmm. and stuff, and she'll do this like, um, she'll do like, foolish beat then and now like live performance mm -hmm. kind of thing on there, and also, um. This one got me, and I was just like, man, she's so good. She sat down at the piano, no makeup. This is on her YouTube channel. And she was like, yeah, I heard Whitney in the car, so I'm just going to do this. And she did I Want to Dance with Somebody on the piano, just kind of noodling mm -hmm. it out. And she's making mistakes, and she's going, oh, wait. And then she's finding the – and I just love that she's just yeah, it's, it's putting it out there. Again, what you said, independent artist, mm -hmm. um, if that were done by a label – there would be lighting and there would be 17 takes and they would make sure, first of all, they'd probably have someone else play the piano and have her act like she's playing it. And the vocals would be overcorrected. And I, I like real people doing real people things. And I think I, I not to give, you know, tiny child Lauren too much credit, but like, I think I said, I think I felt that. Well, from I know, her. Uh, fourth CD buyer over here. I get I, it. I also was on the understood, Debbie but like, I think I get, I got that from her. Even then I yeah. was just like, she's speaking to me in some, cause I, whatever she was doing. Absolutely. Because it was felt earnest. And yeah. even a, a, like as a little kid, I could mm -hmm. sense that. So yeah. Debbie, you're great. Yeah. So that is all the things Lauren thinks are so great. And there's probably many more, but we like to, you know, keep these videos to a dull roar. Uh, please, uh, again, if you if you are Debbie Gibson and you've enjoyed our reasons, uh, please leave a comment and let us know uh, what you think about our reasons why you're so great and tell us why you think you're so great. Uh, <laughs> if you're a Debbie Gibson fan, you know what? Actually, more importantly, if you're not a De Debbie Gibson fan, like if you clicked on this and you're like, what, that, what is so great about that? Like, let us know if we've changed your mind or if you've gone and listened to some of those songs and been like, oh, yeah, these are great. You know, uh, let us know what you think. If you have favorite Debbie Gibson songs that she, uh, Lauren didn't mention, like I, we could absolutely follow up with like a Hidden Gems video or something along those lines uh, eventually. Uh, but if this is your first time on the channel, uh, especially if you're Debbie, hit the subscribe button because we're wonderful and we love all sorts of artists that aren't, that not just you. Yeah, you're one of my nicknames. Yeah, and that's very true. <laughs> uh, but if you would, please hit the notification bell, uh, drop a comment. That matters to us more than anything on the channel. And as we always say, thank you so much for watching.